evening, brethren, and welcome to the house of the Lord this evening. This place here becomes the house of God because his children are gathered together here this evening. I pray that we may enjoy this moment we are going to spend together here and that when we leave this place, once again we live with the assurance that we met Jesus Christ here. Amen. Remote control for you. This evening, it's a prayer meeting, so that's why I changed the time. It was not as usual having the worship right after the session. Uh, maybe they have to raise the volume. The brother complained it's a little bit low, the volume. Is it possible to raise a little bit? Yeah. Can you hear now, Brandon? On the back there? Good. Okay. So we might not be able to take all the prayer requests, but there are some prayer requests that have come to the front. I'll read them first, and then uh, I'll ask some of you, Brandon, to express yourselves also and make your prayer requests for this evening. Today is the birthday of Brother Campos, Francisco Campos, right? <laughs> and the brethren of the Brazilian delegation, they asked us to pray for him and his, for his family. And the Lord bless you, brother, and grant you many more years working for the Lord with good health. Thank you. Okay. What's your name again, brother? <laughs> I forgot. What's his name? Uh, it's brother Justin. Oh, okay, brother Camp. Okay. I thought it was a brother behind there. <laughs> and also we have a brother here who is a delegate and his wife. Uh, uh, is in the hospital, and she is not feeling well, so she's sick, and he's asking us to pray for her. Brother, uh, actually he's not here. Or he's sitting somewhere else. One from the Brazilian delegation. And he did not put the name of his wife here. And I forgot his name. Hmm. So let's pray for the wife of his brother. The Lord knows. We don't know her name, but the Lord knows. And also, brethren, it has been mentioned uh, for us to remember praying for brother uh, Burak. He is also hospitalized for about for two weeks already, right? Yeah. And uh, we are glad uh, we received this evening a message from the family saying that there are signs of some improvement these last two days. So let's keep praying for Brother Burak. And I would like also to ask you to pray for my mother. Her name is Maria. She, last week she had a heart attack, followed by a heart arrest of six minutes, my mother. And uh, that's when I learned that heart attack is not the same of heart arrest. These are two different things. <laughs> but uh, she had a heart arrest of six minutes, and I was with the brethren already in Roanoke. We were praying for her. And the Lord has been answering our prayers. The doctors, they were kind of skeptical that she would survive, but she survived, and they were Guessing since she survived, they thought she would be with some uh, problems because it was a heart arrest of six minutes. And usually the person remains with some traumas from it. But thank God she is recovering well. 
with no problem. She's talk, speaking, I talk to her, and she's eating, she's doing well. They are just holding, still holding her in the hospital, just for precaution, but she might be leaving soon. So pray for her as well. Yes, Brother Fadi. Uh, the sister who is the uh, children's department leader in Central America. She had an accident with a uh, bus. And uh, we are requested to pray for her as well. She went through a surgery and she is now recovering, resting and recover. Brother Padilla uh, asks us to pray out for his wife. Today is her birthday and she uh, he's not there with her so she's not doing so well far from him. <laughs> yeah, let's pray for Sister Padilla. Yes, what's the name of your wife? Yeah, I, I mentioned, but I could I didn't know the name. Oh, scoop. Eh, I don't know the name. I just mentioned it, but I don't know the name. Sister Nadia uh, is, is the wife of uh, our brother. She's she's still in the hospital, uh, doing some exams. She has been feeling a uh, pain in her chest since uh, last Sunday. The brethren are asking us to pray out for brother Armando Palacios. He's one of our workers in Peru. Ah, uh, and uh, So our, our brother Armando Palacios is one of our workers in Peru. He's also in a critical situation and the brethren are requesting that we pray for him. And we have been praying also uh, during our meetings in Roanoke for Sister Cruz. Uh, she's the wife of brother Jurei Cruz and she's sick as well and recovering, but she, went, uh, she also was submitted to a surgery. So let's pray for Sister Cruz as well. Brother Joel Holmes. Uh, Brother Joel Holmes uh, is reminding us to pray for Sister Herta Tuleu. She's the wife of Brother Tuleo. Many of you know him, Brother Joseph Tuleo. She is also very sick. So we need to pray for her. Yes, Brother Mark. Sister Antonieta. And Sister Natalie, there are two workers, sisters that uh, work also for the church. There are two young sisters, uh, they are married, but they are very sick. So Brian, uh, it will be hard to remember all the names when praying, but the Lord knows them. So we will kneel down now and two volunteers can pray to the Lord and present this case to him. Let's kneel down and pray to the Lord. Two volunteers, please. Uh, and please pray aloud. 
as loud as you can. diferentes peticiones que fueron presentadas. Tú conoces cada una de ellas por nombre. Puedas, los que están enfermos, puedas poner tu mano sanadora sobre ellos, conforme a tu propósito. Los que se han accidentado, tú puedas ayudarles a no perder la confianza en ti, que puedan con una fe inquebrantable penetrar hasta el lugar santísimo y encontrar consuelo en ti. También te pedimos por aquellos que están cumpliendo años, que tú los fortalezcas, que sea una experiencia nueva en su vida y que puedan renovar sus votos contigo y puedan decidir siempre servirte. Tú conoces las mayores necesidades de tu causa, conforme a los planes que tienes para nosotros, pasa por nuestras vidas y ayúdenos. Te lo pedimos en los méritos de su Hijo amado, Cristo Jesús. Amén. So, brethren, there, there are moments in life when life becomes complicated. And I want to read with you once again the verse that we read in the beginning. Luke chapter 18, verse 41. Luke chapter 18, verse 41. Saying, what will thou that I shall do unto thee? And he said, Lord, that I may see. Brian, I'll read the last part once again. Lord, that I may see. Do you understand what God is telling us here? What God is telling you? I, there are moments in life when things get really complicated. That was the situation of this man. 
that this day he met Jesus Christ here. And Christ asked him, what do you want me to do for you? And he asked just one thing, Lord, that I may see. There are moments in life when we cannot see God. There's a text in the Spirit of Prophecy that says there are moments when darkness surrounds us and there is nothing we can do. But just wait until darkness is gone. This man that met Jesus here, you all know the, the story. He was a blind man. And what he most wanted in his life, he asked Jesus, that, that I may see me. Is that what the Lord is telling you and telling me, telling us this evening? That we need to see. But there are moments that it's hard to see. There are moments we cannot understand the plans of God. And it's hard to see. But our prayer must be, Lord, that I may see when I cannot see. When I cannot see a solution, when I cannot understand your plans, Lord, help me to see. You know, when I was a child, I enjoyed seeing some pictures of Jonah. Those books they prepare for children with the pictures of Jonah, they are so cute. And always I saw those pictures and Jonah is kneeling down and he's praying quietly. Such a peace. He's praying peace. Nothing disturbing him in the pictures I saw in the books they prepare for children. But when I start reading the Bible, I was forced to see a different picture that the Bible gives about Jonah. It's not that quiet peace. Brother, we are going to read about Jonah, but before going to Jonah, we read a little bit about him. But about, before going there, I'd like you to turn your Bible with me to Exodus chapter 3, verse 1. Exodus chapter 3, verse 1. It says here, now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even Horeb. It's talking about the man that would be the greatest leader in those days, the man that would be the president of the greatest nation in some years, but the Bible says that he was taking care of the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law. Brethren, when we talk about sheep, in the books they give us as children of the sheep, they're always very wise. They're cute. When they give us those small to toys, those sheep, the stuffed sheep, sheep, they are always very white, they smell good, they are cute, but the reality here is different. Life's reality is different. Moses was taking care of a flock of sheep that was not even his sheep, and the reality is that he had to clean the waste of the sheep every day. And I'll tell you, Brelin, it does not smell good. But that's real life, and sometimes life is complicated. This man that had been chosen by God to lead the greatest nation that would exist in those days, now he's there, cleaning the waste of sheep. Do you think he could understand God's plan? Do you think he could see the future right there? Let's remember Joseph. Joseph had nice visions. The Lord showed him he would be powerful, people would be bound da bowing down before him, he would be a powerful man. But there was something God did not show him. 
It was the pit where he was thrown. It was the jail that he was taken to. It was the slavery life that he had to pass before becoming that powerful man. And when Joseph was there in that pity, when he was there in the prison, when he was serving as a slave, for sure it was not easy to see, but he could still pray, Lord, that I may see. And Brian, that's the prayer that we can do today. And ask the Lord to help us that we may see. I'm not going to read, brethren. We don't have time to be going through all the verse here. But I'll just quote it, and I hope you read it uh, later. If you have never pictured Jonah, as it is registered here in chapter 2 of Jonah. You know, it was not that man that was quiet there praying, peacefully praying, with a calm semblance. That was not, that's not what the Bible pictures here. When you read chapter 2 of Jonah, he says, Lord, I am in hell. He says, I am in hell, Lord. And the Bible tells us that the water was coming over his head. So can you imagine this man trying to breathe? That's the situation he's praying there, inside of that fish. The Bible tells there in chapter 2 that the weeds were coming to his face when the well was turning over and over. He could not find where he was. When he would find a way of getting up and breathing, then there were weeds all over his head, over his face. Brethren, it was not easy. Life was complicated for Jonah in those moments. And the only thing he could do was to pray and say, Lord, that I may see your, the plans you have for me. But one thing that is interesting about the life of this man, all of them, God had a plan for them. And brethren, maybe today you cannot see the plan God has for you. Maybe there in the corner where you are working, where the Lord has placed you, you face trials, you face problems. But that's real life, problems and trials. But do not give up. God has a plan for you as well. Today, brethren, people are all over searching for happiness. People are buying cars, bigger cars. People are buying houses, bigger houses, trying to find happiness. People are accumulating money, trying to find happiness. But the true happiness, only Jesus can give. People are looking wrong place. Members of our church, the members in my church, in your church, in our church, they are looking for happiness, seeking for happiness. There are people inside the church that, that have never seen that need to see. They have never seen the radiance, the brightness of Christ's light shining for them. But they are searching for it in wrong place. Happiness only Jesus can give. But there is one thing interesting. Happiness is not connected with easy life. When we talk about Christians, Christianity, when we read about the Christians in the Bible, what do we find? Do you, have you ever find in any place in the Bible saying that the disciples, they were partying? They were in a carnival celebration? No. When we find the Bible, the words we find in the Bible are, are words like fight, wrestle, battle, endure, agonize, die, Famine, stoning, crucifixion. Sometimes life is complicated. And it's complicated for Christians as well. But God has a plan for all of us that one day gave our lives to him. And when life becomes complicated, we can pray, Lord, that I may see what you see and what I cannot see right now. Sometimes we don't understand God's purpose. I read the experience of an elderly man 
this elderly man, the story says he had a horse. And it was a beautiful horse. And the horse was coveted. People wanted to buy that horse from him. And uh, he lived in a small town. And the people came and asked him and said, we want to buy your horse. And he said, I cannot sell the horse. It's more than a horse. I have it for a long time. It's more than a horse, it's a friend I cannot sell. Sometime later, the horse disappeared. And the people in town started saying, this old fool man, what a foolishness. If he had sold the horse, he had made a good mon amount of money. And now the horse is gone. And they start saying, you see, you were cursed because your horse is gone and you didn't get anything. And he said, he told the people of town, if it's a curse or a blessing, I don't know. A few days later, the horse came back and the horse brought with him some wild horses. Beautiful horse. So the man gathered all the horse and his son started training the horse. And the people in town said, to him, you are a blessed man. Now you have many horses. And the man said, if it's a blessing or a curse, I don't know. Sometime later, his son was training the horse and his son fell from the horse and broke his arm. And the people in town said, you see, it's a curse. This horse are a curse. He said, if it's a curse or a blessing, I don't know. Short after, the country broke in war, and the young people were taken to serve the army, and his son had his arm broken and was not drafted. So the people in town said, that's a blessing. Your son doesn't need to go to the army. And he said, if it's a blessing or a curse, I don't know people, I just know that with you, I can do nothing. So brethren, is it a curse or a blessing? We don't know. When trials come, we have to trust in God and leave it in his hands. Because sometimes we say it's a curse and it's God that is standing. And we say, that's the devil. He's sending it to my life. And we are calling God devil because it's the Lord that's bringing it somehow to our lives. And sometimes we say, that's a blessing that God gave it to me. And sometimes it might be someone else that gave it to us. So if it's a blessing or a curse, we don't know. On Calvary, that day on Calvary, there was darkness upon Calvary. And the inspiration says, the cloud of vengeance which threatened only misery and despair. In the reflected light from the cross, reveals the writing of God. So, brethren, there was darkness upon the cross. In Calvary, upon Calvary, there was darkness. It seemed to be a curse, and people were saying he's cursed of God because he has been crucified. And that was the greatest blessing the world ever received, was what people thought to be a curse. From that darkness shined the light of God, saying to the sinner, Live, live sinner, for I paid the ransom. Brian, you are going to face difficulties in life. I don't know what you are going through right now, but God knows what you are facing. God knows what your family is facing, what your children, your spouse are facing. Only God knows the trials you are going to. But I want you to remember that he knows. And if you cannot see right now, just pray to him and ask, Lord, that I may see. I want to show you this picture here. This was a stranded whale that was stranded in British Columbia some weeks ago. Not far from where we live. And this whale was stranded there and you know what happens when a whale 
got to stuck like this one, right? Usually after a few hours, they die. Fortunately, some people saw the whale there, and they started covering the whale with blankets and throwing water in the blankets to keep moisture on her skin. But the whale was there already for nine hours. And people were expecting the whale to die. But suddenly, when everybody thought the whale was going to die, uh, maybe the bread inside can move uh, the picture for me. The remote control seems not to be working. Uh, I can do it from here. Then, when they thought the whale was going to die, it started happening. The tide started going, started going up, little by little. Uh, the picture is not very clear, but there's some water coming in, in here. But the water coming up, up would not be enough, so people said, still the whale is going to die. But suddenly, a wave, a strong wave came and hit the whale. And there she is. She's in the water. When a strong wave came, the whale took advantage of it and went with the wave and got out of the problem that were the rocks. And here is what the whale is doing today. So, brethren, God brings opportunities to our lives. Maybe we have been stranded from God for too long, without hope. Maybe we see that our spiritual life is not what it should be. And this night, tonight, God is talking to our hearts. And it may be that this moment you are being hit by a wave, and you have two options. Or complain that the wave is hitting you too strongly. Or take advantage of it and say, Lord, by thy grace, I'll take advantage of this wave and I'll go further. So may God bless that today, this evening, where you are there, you may pray to the Lord and say, Lord, that, that I may see the opportunity you are giving to me through the, through the trials I'm facing that I may see, Lord, and take advantage of what you are bringing to my life to grow in Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless us that we may he hear his voice saying, live sinner, I have paid the ransom. May we look to the cross of Calvary and see that what sometimes appears to be a curse is the greatest blessing that God is bringing to your life and to my life. Lord, bless us that we may see. Amen.